evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. I mean good morning. It's clearly 4.55 a.m. I'm a little bit uh, fast and loose with my daytime greetings, but here we should probably say good morning. Anyway, it is Sunday morning here in Madison, Wisconsin, and we're doing a Warlock Arena, so I'm going to keep on going. 2-0, but not feeling all that hopeful with this deck. It's a bit top-heavy. It has too many two-drops. Um, and, uh, yeah, we never saw, like... A lot, a lot of key Warlock cards. No Flame Imps, no Blood Imps. Well, one Blood Imp, but it didn't get taken for what I think were pretty valid <laughs> drafting reasons. Uh, no Void Walkers. Saw a couple of Succubuses, which I could have just as easily done without. And we passed on Immortal Coil to take a Harvest Golem, which I don't regret yet. But I might. I, I just wanted to have more things I could play down in the early game. Absolute the Paladin. All right, this could be trouble. Ah, oh, man, this could be a lot of trouble. Uh, okay, so we're gonna keep the ooze around because I only got the one. Uh, this is a bit risky. I'll keep the ooze around. I've only got the one. I want to make sure after True Super Champion gets played that I can destroy it, and this is perfect. This is absolutely what I needed a two drop, which my deck has plenty of. Oh, God. God damn it, that's awful. Um, so this Argent Squire is like the perfect play against a Murloc Tidehunter, and I'm gonna throw it out there anyway. Can't always do the best option. Sometimes you have to do the least bad option. Does it suck that this thing gets a trade against my coin and my two drop? Yes, this is why this is a good card, but uh, that's what I have to do. It's definitely better than the alternative, which is to leave this on the board against the Paladin, no less. So he still comes out ahead because um, he gets to make a recruit now. And I really can't afford to play this ooze. It's you. just... I don't know. We'll see. It'd be nice if I got another two drop, maybe? Nope, not a chance. Ah, oh, man. Do I waste the ooze against the paladin? That seems... Foolhardy. <sighs> Problem is, if I life tap, he gets to now... Yeah, I'm gonna do this. I, th I don't think this is great. I think it's the best move I've got, though. I think that anything else would have been even worse. I'd rather him have a true silver champion in the mid game and maybe get some card advantage then then get an advantage now because i'm unable to keep his board clear ah oh, jesus well this is definitely an aggro deck that's for sure we've actually got a decent um setup here i could even like shadow flame next turn to kill off all the stuff but go ahead and try to keep things as clear as we can this guy's actually sort of decent here because he can He's, he's, he's good for sweeping up minions and not much else. This guy's also good if my opponent keeps on playing nothing but, like, one toughness creatures. Ah, yes. There we go. There's the Blessing of Kings. He's not even gonna hit me, which is totally fair. I'm not gonna hold that against him, but this guy's pretty good. Ah, oh, boy, this game's looking ugly. I mean, five toughness is a lot of toughness. And that's assuming I pop the Divine Shield. I mean, sure, I can Siphon Soul, but... That's not for two turns, and by then he could have played a lot more scary stuff. He'll have been able to play two more things. So this game, I'm just sort of getting aggroed to death, is basically what's happening. Shadow Flame is no good at all, because I, I don't have anything with high power. All right, Frostwolf Forlord has got to be my saving grace here. I mean, it's tempting to play the Stormpike to kill off the Secret Keeper. That is true. But then he just kills off my Warden. He can even kill off my Stormpike. And then I pretty much lose my chance to ever play the Frostwolf Forlord, is the problem. What if I play the Frostwolf Forlord? He got a 6-6. Six, six. He can kill this, kill this. He can play Seekers, make this a 2-3. My 6-6 six, six can start to trade. Or I can Shadow Flame. You know what? That's going to have to do it. I think this is what I have to do. I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to go ahead and just kill this, because the, the health on these guys makes no difference. So I might as well keep his board as clear as possible. If this thing can live the turn, if it doesn't get out of our peace kept or humiliated, I can cast Shadow Flame on it, wipe his board, and then be right back in the game. Uh, I, won't be able to do, I won't be able to do anything else on my turn, but I can life tap Shadow Flame and stay in the game. Looks like there's a decent chance that will happen as long as this is... No! Jesus Christ! Why did he have to have that? <sighs> I think this is over. This is pretty much over. Okay. Okay. So, what is the only way that I could possibly win this game? Well, if I played, like, Stormpike Commando and Shadow Flame, I could do it. But that's nine mana. That's not for another three turns. I'm super low on health. God, I hate this game sometimes. Uh, there's nothing I can do. Man, he just had to fucking have this in his draft. And then he had to fucking have it right now. Oh, I would have been totally fine if he hadn't had that card. <sighs> okay. Hellfire doesn't save me. Actually, it does. Well, a little bit. It lets me kill off all but one of his creatures. 
I'm gonna fish for it. Nope. And it's time to concede. Well, that sucked. I did say that I didn't think this deck was very good, but <laughs> that game still sucked. I mean, I, I would have been totally fine if he hadn't had a Peacekeeper and, like, outrageously strong aggro. Notice how he played a lot of aggressive stuff. He had, like, the Argent... He had two Argent Squires, didn't he? Or just one? Yeah, he had two Argent Squires. And he had, you know, um... I guess the, the, he was just playing Recruits for a couple... He played Recruits twice. So, yeah, I guess he didn't have, like, that great of a draw. He had the Ar double Argent Squire. He had a Chillwind Yeti and a Blessing of Kings. And I think I made the right moves. Notice how I, I made really suboptimal trades. I played one two drop when it was bad. I played another two drop when it was bad. And I needed every little bit I, I could get to even hang on. And it just it was just wasn't enough because he had the peacekeeper to block my shadow flame. Warcraft here, I believe this is a different paladin. Oh my god, I gotta shake that last game. That last game sucked. So many donkey dongs. I can't even handle it. We'll send this back. A four mana card would be nice. I'd like to increase my odds of getting it. Two mana? Well, Loot Hoarder is eh, kind of awful against Paladins, because obviously his 1-1 one, one recruit can kill it. You get your card back, and you each trade two mana, so it's, you know, losing a lot of potential there. We'll probably play the Murloc Tidehunter first. The 1-1 one, one Murloc Scout will give me a free kill on one of his recruits, which is nice. There's our four drop. Uh, and then I could play the Loot Hoarder in peace, although honestly I might not even do that. I might just you know, curve out. I've got two, three, four. Okay, so unlike my last opponent, this one is being a gentleman and not playing stuff. Oh my god. I know that this is a random game and your opponent could always have the answer, so you really can't let, like, them having the right card in a particular game hold, uh, hold it against, or you can't, like, hold it, um, can't get too upset when people have the right card is what I'm trying to, and, and, and it's trying to say. But, um, man, that Peacekeeper wrecked my day. This actually was about as good as that card gets. I could Shadow Bolt it, but then all I just have, all I have is this 1-1, one, one, or I can play the Blade Master, but then he gets to kill the Blade Master, and he can make it a recruit after it. We're gonna go ahead and play the Blade Master, though. So I let a Paladin keep a creature around, but I've got removal in case this gets buffed or whatever, and I feel like it was important to put this 4-3 onto the board. So if he plays like a real card here, like a real 3-drop, I can Shadow Bolt it and kill this thing with my Blade Master and, and still be in good shape. If he plays a Recruit is where it would actually kind of suck. Okay, this... I'm seeing a lot of these today. I don't know what is going on with people. I don't think it's a very good card, but whatever. If people want to keep one of them going to play it, they can do that. Alright, so... I could do this and a Loot Hoarder. The problem is then I'm sort of ultra vulnerable to a Consecration. There's no particular reason to do that. Let's just go ahead and play my 5-6. And we'll get rid of that. So, he could very easily get into a great position here if he has a Dark Iron Dwarf on the Panther, letting it trade into my 5-6. He could also just play an Outdoor Peacekeeper, making this into a 1-6, which would suck. But maybe I'll catch a break this time. <laughs> I'm sort of due. So his Iron Forge Rifleman did kill off my Murloc Tide Hunter, just totally for free. However, I immediately got value back by killing it off with my Blade Master. This is why I like four threes for three. Although a three three for three would have done the job just as well, which is why Iron Forge Rifleman's a bad card. It looks like it's a Consecration that's coming up. No, interesting. Well, Hammer of Wrath is almost as good as Consecration. It's still he's like staying equal on cards. The problem is that he's um, you know, not killing both of my creatures. So I think it would have been better if he could have killed them both. Do I run into a Consecration here by playing this and this? Well, the Loot Hunter draws me a card, so all he's really killing is the Blade Master and my Tide Hunter, and spending his entire turn. And then I can play a Lord of the Arena afterwards. I mean, what's the alternative? Life Tap and Loot Hoarder? It is a reasonable alternative to Life Tap and Loot Hoarder. Okay, we're gonna Life Tap. I might get like a 3-drop of some sort. Alright, no, but so that's fine. So we'll play the Loot Hoarder. Reason I'm doing this rather than the Tide Hunter is, again, a little bit of protection against Consecration. What again would suck here is if he played a 1-1, because I don't really want to trade either of these creatures for a 1-1, but I will, the Loot Hoarder. Man, what is up with these? He, he, I think this might be a new player. He seems to overdraft these crappy Pinger creatures. Anyway, um, what I'll do here is just get super value from my Loot Hoarder. It's part of why I don't like that Stormpike Commando. It's just so fragile that your opponent can do dumb things like that. And here I am going to swarm the board a little bit. We'll do this, and we'll do this. And the reason I'm okay with that is... If he plays a Consecration, it kills off one of my cards and then the Swarm part of this card, but it takes up his whole turn and leaves me with a 2-2, which I'm totally fine with. So it's not a great use of Consecration here. I feel like I would still be in decent shape. He's got seven cards to my, well, thanks to all the Swarming, nine. We'll see if he's got the Consecrate. 
I mean, if he has it, he probably should play it. And he still can. Alright, no consecration makes Papa Boris a happy boy. Okay, so Hellfire is not the card to play here, I don't think. I could play Lord of the Arena. It's actually really great against a Ventricle Mercenary. The risk I'm running into there is you can put Divine Shield or Blessing of Kings and so on. So a safer play is just to use the Argent Commander and one of my swarms to uh, kill off the Ventricle Mercenary straight. In fact, that's what I'll do. I, it's, it's a bit safer that way. Putting another body on the board. And um, the Dragonling and her mechanic... <laughs> No, sorry. The, the, the mechanic and her, and her dragonling um, survive. The, the murlocs there bit the bullet. So now he's got six cards to my eight. Hammer of Wrath is keeping him... A, he's keeping him alive card-wise with the Hammer of Wrath, but he's falling behind on the board pretty severely. Harvest Golem is a good card. Makes Moshe had a mortal coil. Alas, I do not have that thing. I'd love to get, like, a buff for one of these. Like, a Shattered Sun Cleric would have been great. Unfortunately, it was not to be. So I could play the Lord of the Arena. It stands up reasonably well to this Harvest Golem and just swing at him for four. It's one option. I could Soul Fire and then use the Dragonling to kill it, but then I'm losing another card. I could do the same with Shadow Bolt. I would attack with this into it and heal it, but the problem is it doesn't even kill the Harvest Golem, which is sort of sad. Let's go ahead and Life Tap. It looks like I'll be doing that regardless. Okay. Well. Alright, let's do the Lord. And we'll get four damage through. There is a risk, of course, you could put Blessing of Kings on this and Divine Shield and stuff, but it seemed better than voluntarily going down three cards to kill this thing, or down two cards to kill that thing. And I have to say, Your magic shall not save this, this Dragonling mechanic has been extremely good. Well, here we got a Spellbreaker, which is obviously good for my opponent. Uh, let's the Harvest Golem get a little bit of value going. Could be okay, though, with a Hellfire. Interestingly, I could, like, attack, Hellfire, see what else he plays before I make a final call on that. Hellfire plus Dark Scale Healer is a fun combo. It heals back most of the damage. So we'll see. If what he plays will die to Hellfire, I might just do that. I'll have to lose my, my mechanic to do this, but I think it'd be worth it. So we'll see. Reporting for duty. Okay, duty has been reported. Siphon Soul is not really the right card here. Let's see, can I win? 8 plus 3 is 11. 11 plus 4 is mm, 15. I'm actually a little bit shy of killing him. This does not deal... Excuse me. Uh, this does not hit enemy heroes. This does not hit enemy heroes. Okay, so I can't quite burn him out just yet. I could just attack him for 8 down to 11 and, you know, try to rush him out. But I think it's a little bit safer just to go for the Hellfire plan here. Because the Hellfire, I'm getting the damage on his face through anyway. Might as well do that. So we'll do this. We'll cast a Hellfire. Uh, Shadow Flame actually almost as good. This guy lives, though, and I don't have a Mortal Coil to finish him off, tragically. So yeah, we'll do the Hellfire. Play a Dark Scale Healer to heal myself and my Lord. And we'll give him, I think he's been playing pretty well. We'll give him a well played. Okay, so now we're threatening the kill with all, with what we have on the board. If he has taunt, I'm very I mean I'm very likely to win this turn because Siphon Soul will clear out whatever he wants to put down, and then Soul Fire will get the finish if my creatures are dead. And if my creatures are not dead, then he's in serious trouble. So this paladin put up much less of a fight than the last one, which is fine. I think I had enough games like the la the game before this one mm. to suit a lifetime. All right, lay on hands. A lot of health, and he's getting a lot of cards. So he's been doing fine on cards, and interestingly, he does survive. This is the 8 life gain is enough. This is uh, 10 plus 4 is 14 damage, and okay, make that 9 damage. So, wow, this game got prolonged to an unimaginable degree, actually. That's kind of crazy. Let's go ahead and life tap here. Uh, okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play this guy. I'm going to buff him, even though it means dealing one less damage now, because that way he doesn't die to Consecration. And, okay, so we're threatening the win again, pretty much the same deal as before, where I can Siphon Soul one of his blockers, and then Soul Fire is extra damage. He shouldn't be able to kill my stuff, but I suppose if he has Equality and Consecration, this game will get prolonged. And, in fact, he might even win at that point. I won't have much to put on the board except for a Fairy Dragon, 
This is sort of the problem with all these spells. And yeah, then I could just lose the game. Maybe I should have kept the Shadows on Cleric in my hand. Or maybe kept this guy back in my hand. I probably should have kept this guy back in my hand. I, there really was no reason for me to open myself to a loss in case of an admittedly rare, but not impossible and not unseen combo. Okay. Well, yeah, there's, there's enough here. Let me just do Siphon Soul in case my arithmetic's wrong, but I believe that I can just... Kill this, kill that. This is five plus four is nine damage. You know, I'm you know I'm I'm pretty confident in my arithmetic. Let's let's just go ahead and do this. I mean, if I'm not confident in that arithmetic, I shouldn't be playing Hearthstone, am I right? All right, good game. My opponent was very polite. All those well played were were well mannered. And I bet he was just saying well played all the time to hear how a paladin says well played because I like the voice acting for that. It's it's really it sounds really cool. Okay, so we're up to three and one. I'd love to get to six wins with this deck, have a nice success under my belt with the, with the Warlock. If I got to money, that would be great. Don't really predict it, though. Granted, the one deck that beat us was an aggro deck, so like that's kind of always a special case when you lose to aggro, and that is sort of this deck's weakness. So I could be maybe undervaluing my deck, who knows. DJ Bajix, nice name. Okay, well, this is actually great. I'm gonna keep all this stuff. Could have mulliganed this to try to get a two drop, but I don't even really need one. You can just play Dalaran Mage with a coin on turn two, Shattered Sun Cleric, this, and then this. I might as well just keep my curve here. Better than. I think it's better to do that than to give myself infinitesimally small odds of of getting um, another two drop. Well, anyway, I got one anyway, so that's fine. We're going to actually coin it out. Uh, because North Shattered Cleric needs to die. Obviously, if I don't do this, then, you know. Dalaran Mage is not playable because the North Shark Cleric can run into it. So my opponent needs here, because he's not the second player, he cannot coin a Shattered Sun Cleric. What he needs is an Abusive Sergeant. Bring me steel. Or a, um... Oh, Powered Shield. Actually, this, this works as well. This also works. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and Life Tap. And we'll kill off this Master Swordsmith. So, didn't really see much reason not to do that. So now if he plays a Shattered Sun Cleric, he's fine. Because the North Shattered Cleric will then kill my Fairy Dragon and live to tell about it with one health. I don't have any, um... I don't, I don't have any, uh... Mortal Coils Power Word Shield also does the job. So he gets to run in. Oh, and he... With Power Word Shield, he also gets to heal it up. Ah, I see what you did there. That was... That was pretty good. So, the value that I got with my Fairy Dragon for killing off the Master Swordsmith was promptly lost when the North Shattered Cleric killed me. Alright, here we go. We're gonna Shadow Bolt this thing. Not what I really want to do, but you can't leave a damaged North Strike Cleric around if all you're playing is like a Shattered Sun Cleric. Like my Shattered Sun Cleric would have just died, basically. Uh, no, it wouldn't have died. It would have it would have lived, I suppose. But he could have drawn another card. I don't know. I didn't like the look of that. So we get to play the Violet Teacher next turn, which is good against most four drops, not against like a Light Spawn, I suppose. Nice. Uh, this also sucks. Oh my God, man! I had such a good start with that Fairy Dragon, and then this stuff. Well, I'm gonna do this anyway. It's not great that he can burn me with his hero ability and finish me off, but the reason I'm doing this is that I just drew the Stormpike Commando, which, although he's a bad card in my opinion, it will let me kill off the Sock and I Soul Priest afterwards. So, I feel like I've got a plan here. As long as he doesn't heal this with a healing creature. Oh, no, he can't, because all of his healing cards... No! Jesus! What is up with these games today? Motherfucker. Oh, my God. All right, well, change of plans. We're going to play this guy. But this, I mean, this technically holds up against his creatures, but it is so fragile. God, he had a Master Swordsmith of all motherfucking things to buff the North Strike Cleric, which didn't actually even make a difference, did it? It didn't make any difference. But then he had a Power Word Shield. He had the Soul Priest. He had the Shadows and Cleric. Man, just perfect stuff. Oh, my God. Mm. Well, this is, this is looking ugly. So he's going to kill off my healer. Luckily, at least it trades with the creature. And this thing still maddeningly is surviving. Oh my god. Okay, Shadow Bolt needs to happen here. It just needs to happen. So we'll Shadow Bolt this. I'm going to play a Dalaran Mage. I could have played this first, but it didn't make any difference. I wasn't going to kill... I wasn't going to Shadow Bolt that thing. Anyway. Okay. Well, I'm hanging in there, but it's just... It feels awful. So our dinky dudes are facing each other off. Mind vision. Hmm. Okay, this could actually be very unfortunate. These are all, all decent cards. I mean, Shadow Flame is the most situational one. But if he got it, he could easily make use of it later on. And we're getting into mind control territory now. Oh my god, how did this game get so bad? Oh, fuck. 
Boulder fist over. That is a problem. Nightblade. Okay. <laughs> If any of you were wondering why I hate Nightblade, this is a great illustration. I don't even know what to do, man. We're gonna do... well, actually that's stupid because I can't even do anything else. Fuck me. How did this game get so bad? This is just terrible. Even without mind control, the Boulder Fistoga just kills it. And then he can heal it up, so I, I cannot entertain any hopes of Stormpike Commando afterwards. This dies to the Boulder Fistoga. What is there to do? Do I just play the Nightblade because it's the least shitty card to throw into the Ogre? The problem is he can heal it up, so like dealing incre incremental damage to it doesn't really work. God, I want to just concede this. Alright, we'll life tap. Uh, we'll see what we can get. Alright, Dragon League mechanic. Sure. So you can use this Warden, which has been very good for him, to kill off the Dragon thing, and you can use the Ogre to kill off the mechanic. I don't know, it was just all terrible. Every everything, everything sucks, is basically what's happening here. Well, anyway, I did say in the beginning this deck was bad, and you can see why, like, up against a priest who didn't do anything, like, super remarkable, just played good cards, I, I just wasn't able to hold up in the slightest. And then the, the aggro paladin also crushed me. Alright, we got that going on, which is great. That's awesome. Just gonna heal up his big taunter. Notice how taunt's pretty good. It's stopping me from using my dragonling to kill off his commando. Okay, well... Oh, he's just he's just aggroing me down. Actually, All right, I'm gonna counter commando. I think. I've got a huge Take some of his creatures off the board. We'll we do this. Well. I'm pretty much on the brink of like just losing because I mean this Boulderfist Ogre's already attacked me once. It's gonna attack me again down to ten. My only healing in this deck is the chill, the Dark Scale Healer, which I've already played, so that's gone. And a Siphon Soul. I mean it's pretty much over. Ah, uh, Holy Nova. Okay. Okay. Mm so that Mogajin Warden is just wrecking my entire life. Non-stop. <sighs> wow. I guess I could have played this Warden to slow things down. That might have been a reasonable move. Hellfire. Whatever. Okay. That's enough of that. And on to the next game we go. I've been looking at my stats lately, although I, I'm not infinite anymore in the arena, and that is kind of sad. I'm still like a, I'd say like I'm doing pretty well. Like I have very few runs that go below four, and I've never had. I've only had one run go to zero. I've had like six at three. Excuse me, six at two. Or no, is it three at two? I think I've had like three at two, one at zero, none at one. So I, I'm, I'm, I do a good job in the arena being consistently not awful. But uh, yeah, this is this is one of those runs that is probably not going to go to the distance. It is a place I would like to go to someday. But today might not be the day. Let's see who our next opponent is. Got a hunter. Mike Mayhem. Okay. Well, hunter is always a good. Um, hunters always are good against warlocks. I would say it's always a favorable matchup for the hunter. We'll keep the soul fire around to stop any aggression. But the shadow bolt, I'd rather just get some creatures. Well, this is not the greatest start. You really don't want to have like a three and two fours because basically what it does is it stops you from using your coin well either i use the coin on the three then i can't play the fours on turn three or i play this on turn three but then i'm not using the coin to play those on turn four so what you really want is two cards of the lower mana cost and one cost of one card of the higher well what i'm gonna do is just um coin out this guy it's a snipe okay well, so the snipe traded for my three drop and a coin that's actually about as good as snipe gets. These guys would have survived the snipe, I suppose. So if I had life tapped instead and coined one of them out, I would have been in much better shape. So that could be the mistake that cost me the game. We'll see. Harvest Golem is awful to see because the soul fire isn't even usable against it. Oh man, this is just... Oh my god, this is going straight to the dogs. This game is going straight to the dogs. Jesus Christ, what is up with these games? I mean, that time I did make a choice. I should have life tapped last turn, and then this turn I could be coining out, like, the Pit Lord. Or the Violet Teacher. Yeah, that one little risk really did it for me. So it was a pretty educational game, I'd say. My, my decision making was rather poor. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually play the Violet Teacher here, and the reason for that 
Another snipe. Wow, he's really loving those snipes. The reason for that is it and the Pit Lord both survived to snipe and then die to the Harvest Golem. I'd like to, if I can, avoid actually playing this Pit Lord since it does, you know, deal five damage to me against a Hunter, which is a little bit of a tricky proposition. All right, I assume he's going to play something else afterwards. He sure is. Okay. Well, I think my move here is very, very clear. We've got to um, play the Stormpike Commando. Ping this thing off and soul fire this questing adventure before it gets out of hand. Life and soul is a card I'm kind of sad to see go. I would have very much rather lost this pit lord. And here's again why the Stormpike Commando is just a bad card. Yeah, I killed something, but then this fucking golem gets to kill it. Now, I am ahead on cards against my opponent, so I could win on that if he has, like, none of the answers that he needs, but it's not super likely that that's going to happen. So this guy's actually really good against Lord of the Arena. Why Pop Wars isn't like Lord of the Arena, volume 777. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to Shadow Bolt this thing, and I'm not going to Life Tap, I don't think. I've got plenty of cards. Cards are not the problem. It's playing them out that's the problem. The curve of my deck is really coming back to bite me here. I mean, he can just almost win with Steady Shot alone at this point. All right. <laughs> is that another Snipe? Do I dare guess? All right, we're going to go ahead and think. If I play this, I'm just wasting three mana, so I might as well play the biggest creature I can, which is this. Oh my god, it's not a snipe. That's crazy. That is actually crazy. Alright, does he have a deadly shot? Of course he does. Cuz of course he does. Why wouldn't he have a deadly shot? I mean, that would be crazy for him not to have it. Ah, he's got the monkey in front of the hyena. So this is about as good as this monkey gets. Because basically, it means that once I kill this monkey, he, the hyena gets bigger. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to play this. And we're going to play this. I'm just trying to put as much taunt in the way as I can. Gotta keep in mind the secret here. It could be Freezing Trap, which would be annoying. I'm a mana short from being able to play the Mechanic and the Warlord, which would be nice. I lost Siphon Soul, so my only... My only card here that is a um, healing card is the Dark Scale Healer. The way that he set this up makes me really think that it's a Freezing Trap. Because why else would he play like that? I'm going to go ahead and actually do this. I'm going to check for a freezing trap first. It is not a freezing trap, interestingly. Okay, well. Uh, if it's not a freezing trap, I cannot play Pit Lord. It's just not playable. I can only play one of my creatures here, which sucks. I don't want to do this. Do I? Maybe I do want to do this. It's a point of damage, but whatever. It's the biggest body that I've got. Obviously, I'm not going to life tap here. It's just not possible. So, this is not a freezing trap, it's not a snake trap either, and it's not a snipe. So, I guess it's either a misdirection, or it could be an explosive trap, which is really unfortunate, because it means this steady shot will kill me in just like a few turns. Well, we're going to have to check for explosive trap first. Uh, it seems to be what it is. I was really hoping for a misdirection. So, I'm dead in just a few turns. You could even burn me out, potentially, but we'll do the best we can. So, we're going to do this, and we're going to do this. This is a lot of damage. Can I kill him next turn? What is this? 8, 10, 12, 18, 19. <laughs> oh my god, I will never live it down. If my opponent lets me attack with everything and I kill him with a Nightblade, I will never live this down because that will mean Nightblade was actually good for something. Okay, that, well, whether it's Explosive Trap or Freezing Trap, it saves him this turn. Unfortunately, and it looks like he has some kind of a removal. Silence. Alright, that's also cutting into my damage potential. I kill Commando. Oh my god, I'm dead next turn. Unless I draw my Dark Scale Healer. Because I don't have enough damage to kill him now. Nope, not a chance. Alright, well, I'm gonna go out in style here. And that's a wrap. So, that kind of sucked. This being a beast, making Kill Command do extra damage was very good, so that owl was incredibly good for my opponent there, but the secret would have been sufficient for him to buy a turn, even without the help of that owl. Okay, that was kind of a shitty arena, but I, I guess it's some consolation that I called it pretty much all the way. I called it when I finished the deck, I called it after I went 2-0, and and after going 2-0 and I went 3-3 three and three against, I would say, some pretty mediocre decks, so that sucks, and... If you, if you are done here, 
A couple people have been asking me, what is Papa Boris's happy fun time bonus hour? Basically, if you just want to watch the games and you want to head out, then feel free to do so now. I'd appreciate if you liked and or subscribed on your way out. But if you'd like to stick around for Papa Boris's happy fun time bonus hour, where we do all the post-run rituals, then stay tuned. So, uh, here we go. We got 15 gold for our three wins, which is not as good as it gets, but it's not as bad as it gets either. Let's take a look at our pack next. Will there be a as a solace for Epic? I don't think I have those. No rare. I didn't know that could happen. Uh-huh. I guess this actually replaced the rare. Interesting. Pretty sure I don't have those yet. I hope. Ah, uh, good. That is a new epic for me. The commons, of course, were all repeats. And this is actually my first Cabal Shadow Priest. Awesome. That's pretty great. Let's go ahead and take a sneak peek at our next arena. As we cast some more spells, it is going to be Warlock, Rogue, or Druid. Oh my gosh, well, we played with Rogue and Warlock pretty recently, so it's going to be Druid next time. I'll see you then.